I came from a family where a lot of us could draw. Um, we were pretty artistic, and it's continuing through the next generations to our nieces and nephews have a, a little bit of an artistic gene. I remember two of my brothers and I kind of drawing all the Hardy Boy book covers. We said uh, it took us probably a few months to do it, but we did them all. And um, I've just always loved to draw and paint. So I knew when I went to school that I wanted to do something with artwork. So I kind of funneled into illustration when I was in school, but I had a lot of fine art classes. And at the time when I was taking illustration courses, we worked a lot with watercolor and acrylic medium. So uh, I started to get introduced to working with watercolor. When I got out of school, I got hired by a, a medical illustration studio in Minneapolis. Um, a lady named Joan Beck had her own studio. And I kind of learned on the job there. And then I went back to school and took some anatomy classes and um, ended up going freelance after about five years of working in her studio. It started off uh, with a lot of traditional medium when I was in school. It was airbrush and pen and ink and pencil. And now it's uh, probably about 10, 15 years ago, it just all switched over into the computer side of things, and um, which is fine. It's That's exciting as well, too. But I really miss that uh, tactile getting my hands on art supplies and stuff. So that's another uh, nice benefit of watercolor painting. After doing a lot of technical art on the computer, I can go and get a brush in my hand and some watercolor paper and pencils and stuff and it just kind of feeds feeds that part of my soul. And once I went freelance and working out of my home studio here, it, it allowed me the chance to make my own schedule and spend an hour or two watercolor painting when I needed a break or if I'm going to travel for a painting uh, class or something, I don't have to ask time off from my boss or my company, I'm my own boss. So it's worked out uh, better than I could have ever imagined. They really have gone hand in hand. My uh, uncle was a painter, and uh, he had given me this book from his book collection a long time ago, Figure Painting and Watercolor by Charles Reed. Charles Reed's a very famous watercolor uh, artist. And uh, it just really opened my eyes to the, the artistic possibilities of watercolor as a medium. And I, I joined the Minnesota Watercolor Society, and I was a member for about three months, and they asked me to be president. <laughs> And uh, so then I took it, you know, I just figured what the heck and, and it was it was good because I met a lot of people. It just, you know, kind of got me introduced more into that world of exhibitions and showing my work and stuff and meeting a lot of other artists. American artists had a, um, an international watercolor competition and I sent in about five paintings or something and uh, I won it. <laughs> it was back in 2006 and they ended up doing a whole uh, article on me and put me on the cover of their watercolor magazine and after that came out uh, the floodgates kind of opened. I knew you know that magazine goes out around the world people started to get introduced to my work more and more. I've had a few other articles since then an American artist and international artist and watercolor magic. And then I got asked to uh, to teach. Uh, once you start, people start seeing your work in exhibitions, and you're a little bit of an award winner. They start wanting you to uh, to teach, and it just snowballs. It's just, it's like anything. It's word of mouth. You know, if you do a good job, and um, people are happy with your work, and they just they keep recommending you. So now I get asked to teach all over the world. I've been to Europe, and I'm going back to France and Italy next year, and I've been to China and Mexico, and. So uh, it's just blossomed into a nice career, better than I could have ever expected or, or hoped for. So I think everybody should really look for that. Um, you, uh, having that balance of doing what you need to do to make a living, but making time for um, you know, what you love. My watercolor work, um, I love it, and I'm always striving to get better at it, and I know that that's something that I think that I have a little bit of an edge uh, over a lot of people. I've always been able to draw pretty well, and my painting skills, I've been doing it for 20 years. I've been getting better and better. And um, so I'm able to start concentrating more of my efforts on something that I really love, and it shows you know, in my work because it's just so enjoyable to get outside and, and paint and really study nature. And um, you know, everybody's in such a hurry. You're just passing by all this all these beautiful scenes out there. And when you, when you go outside with the intent of painting, um, you realize uh, how much beauty there is around us and we're, we're missing it all. I guess long story short, 
it shows when you really enjoy what you're doing and vice versa it probably doesn't show if you're just doing a job to get by and um, so find something that you're very passionate about and you'll be successful at it.